Very good evening. Owls fans, as you know yourself, I owe you one, don't I, this week, uh, following the uh, superb appearance a week ago, and I'm sure you'll allow me to say that, of uh, both Billy Sharp, Sheffield United's captain and ace goal scorer, and Simon Moore, uh, the Sheffield United goalkeeper who's playing an equally important part in the Blades' rise inexorably towards the Championship. But it's Sheffield Wednesday we concentrate on this week with uh, a died in the wool Wednesdayite supporter, player, captain at one stage, and now the head of academy coaching at Middlewood Road Training Ground. Very warm welcome, Stephen Haslam. Thank you very much. It's good to see you, Stephen. I remember you playing, of course, very, very well. And you came through in a batch of homegrown players at that time, you know, around about the late, late 90s, 1998. That's right. And people look back at that, you know, when they talk about people coming through and you're now sort of one of the people responsible for bringing players through. People look back at that as being, well, look, we had all those players at one time. There's yourself, Alan Quinn, Lee Bromby, Derek Geary. Can we do that again, kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, it was a really good period um, for the youth development department of the club. Um, I remember debuting in 99 at home to Liverpool, which was a very special occasion <laughs> for myself and my family. A very, very proud day. Um, but I think the game that sort of sticks out for me um, will be the Sheffield United Willington Cup game. Um, when Paul Jewell was manager, because on that yeah. night, Matt Amshaw played, uh, Owen Morrison played, Alan Quinn played, yeah. Derek Ge Geary came on at half time, and we won the game as well. So, for us boys who, who played together in the youth team, that was a real special evening for us. Absolutely. It was great to see you all come through together. And the Liverpool game as well, where you made your debut, you won that one as well by one goal to nil. That's right, um, yeah. And again, such an unbelievably proud moment for myself and my family, you know, all the sacrifice and hours of effort I'd put in over the years and to get rewarded with a, a debut against a club like that and to win was a real special moment for me that, that lives with me forever. We'll look back on your career in more detail later. Other career highlights include uh, captaining England schoolboys against the Brazil team including Ronaldinho. Uh, now that's a <laughs> great highlight we can look back on but how um, helpful to you is it the fact that you've come through the same way that you want your charges to come through at the moment, that you've come through this academy system at uh, Sheffield Wednesday and now here you are responsible for bringing people through in the same way? Yeah, I think it's a, a, a big thing really that I've experienced what the young boys are going through at different ages. I joined the Centre of Excellence as it were back in the day under Clive Baker as, as an eight-year-old. It was just one training session a week up till I began. Came 14, signed schoolboy forms, joined the club on finishing school, um, and then progressed to the first team. So the fact that I've been through that, that was experience myself, I think that carries a lot of weight. I remember Clive Baker, great character, the cigar smoking Clive Baker. Yeah. I bet you knew when he was around by the whiff of the cigar, did you not? Well, I didn't uh, see too much of that growing yeah. up as a young boy, but he had a great aura about him, fantastic yeah. football person, um, set high standards, great insight into the game and, and for me growing up I was really lucky to, to work under Clive because he was an outstanding coach and you know a lot of my success was down to Clive's coaching as a, as a developing schoolboy. Wonderful enthusiast. Of course you kind of picked up the baton from Lee Bullen haven't you in a, in a way because Lee was there at, at uh, Middlewood Road and then suddenly got uh, moved into uh, well, I was going to say a more important role, but certainly a more high-profile role, role with the first team. That was first with uh, Dave Jones and Stuart Gray. And now, of course, he's, you know, right-hand man of... Uh, That's Charles right. Lee's uh, obviously played for the club, captain of the club at Cardiff, yeah. gone on to coaching, uh, worked with the under-21s as it was a couple of years ago, and then got promoted to the first-team environment. And, and I think he's really enjoying it. And obviously the first-team have, have had a good couple of years. So um, he, he's a really good link for us as well, Lee Bullen. Um, obviously academy staff speak to Lee a lot in terms of which players are ready to have training opportunities and, and game time with the first team and, he, and he's a really important link for us. He understands, as you say, both sides of the operation. So when you feed a player into him, he's got a good idea. A yeah, very, and, very and, good and he idea. takes a real interest in the youth development as well. You know, he watches a lot yeah. of under-23 games, under-18 games as and when he can. And like I said, he's a really good link for us in the, in the academy department. We'll look at one or two of the young prospects that you've got. Uh, you know, most supporters will pick out one in particular, and we'll certainly talk about that guy yeah. uh, with the famous father uh, a little later in the show. But you're still only 37, so you, you're of an age where you could you you could almost still be still be playing. Uh, that brings you closer to the young players coming through than than, than many other coaches would be. Yeah, there's 
not that generation gap no. as, as big as what some coaches would be. I mean, I finished playing full time at 32. I had three years at Hartlepool, which were um, quite successful for that club in League One. Um, but the, the pain on my body started to tell a little bit, and playing a lot of games in quick succession made the playing became painful. So I had already well on the way to getting all my coaching qualifications. I worked part time in the academy for a number of years. So the next logical step was to, you know end my playing career and, and, and start what's been a new chapter for me. Mm. And you've been a leader throughout. I mentioned the fact that you're captain Wednesday all, all the way through the levels. You, you captain England schoolboys. But we'll talk about that later. You, you, you're at the academy in a different era to the one where you came through. Yeah. Um, I mean, you started your career at, uh, in the first team at Wednesday in 98, making that breakthrough, and you were there for six years. 171 appearances uh, across that time, which is, which is excellent, averaging nearly 30... 30 a year at a time when the club was like up there and then on the slide so you kind of saw both sides of it yeah I mean I joined the club in 96 leaving school yeah. it was the uh, start of the season when Rich Humphreys scored the goals and the club yeah. were top of the Premier League after four games um, by the time I'd broke through in 99 things were starting to dip a little bit obviously the financial situation kicked in got relegated in 2000 and then it became a, re a real struggle really yeah um, and a lot of that was down to the sort of financial situation of the club at that yeah. time. Which is what leads me on to how different things are now from that time when anybody with some ability, you know, was seized upon by the club, get them in the first team because this was a, you know, we can't afford ready-made players. And so, but all of you did become ready-made players, you know, credit to you, yeah, it was sink or swim really, wasn't it? It was, yeah, but like I say, in that era we had a, a successful youth team, you know, it, it was... Mm. You know, we went most of the season unbeaten, really. So we knew we had talent in that group, and it is rare to find five or six players come through together. But that's what happened in that period. So it was good. Well, this period is so different because Sheffield Wednesday can afford to buy the ready-made article, as we've yeah. seen only just recently with two expensive strikers arriving during the uh, during the January window. So I mean, it, it strikes me that the healthier a club's finances, the harder it is for the academy. Yeah, to I, produce think, players I, think for that a, I think that's a logical statement that you just made there, but it's, the challenge is even greater, and that's something that you've got to embrace. And I still think that if the players are good enough, they will come through. Maybe not in the numbers that, that we talked about there, but like I said, the challenge is greater, but that's a, a challenge for us as coaches as well to, to raise them to that better level. And let's be right, the club have been out of the Premier League for 15 years. That's where the ambitions are, and that's great. I don't, you know, we're lucky to work and support a club that's got ambitions now, so that's, that's fantastic. And maybe it's taken some of the shackles off uh, in, the, in the academy operation as well. You know, that was, it was pretty tight, I would have thought, in your earlier time there. When I was a player? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like player. you said, you know, I remember Paul Jewell coined it the Grey and Jill sort of team that, that yeah. night against Sheffield United where, like I say, five or six players were sort of still teenagers, so it was a, yeah. a real stretch on, on the academy. Well, you've got quite a number of players and even though only one tends to get talked about in the main for understandable reasons. Yeah, I think I, think I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. <laughs> Before we go there, um, let's talk about some of the others. I mean, there's a couple of young goalkeepers. I mean, it's great because you've got an experienced goalkeeper, Kieran Westwood, who arguably is the best goalkeeper in the championship. I mean, he's I think that's you, to you say. couldn't argue yeah. really. Uh, you know, he's, some of the saves he's made this season have been incredible and he's great at distribution as well, setting attacks going forward. Joe Wildsmith and Cameron Dawson behind him. Yeah, two young goalkeepers who've been with us a number of years in the academy. Great to see them progress and they both had playing opportunities at first team level. I think a lot of credit's got to go to people like Andy Rhodes that have, and Nicky Weaver who've worked with them over a number of years and the goalkeepers, the young goalkeepers work alongside the senior ones quite a lot so um, even for Joe and, and Cameron two or three years ago they're working alongside people like Chris Kirkland quite a lot and picking up obviously his habits and behaviours, and obviously seeing how he performs as well. Now they've got Kieran Westwood as a mentor for them, and like you said, he's, he's an outstanding goalkeeper, and uh, it's a challenge for them to to get in front of Kieran. Yeah, uh, at the moment that looks impossible unless he's injured. Yeah, that's been the case. Oh, yeah, but again, that's that's a could. challenge for a young player. They've, yeah. they've got to be better than than what's in front of them. Yeah, you mentioned Nicky Weaver. Now he's a, he's among there's a lot of uh, ex pros, recognisable names who who work. In the academy, just right that's right. We've got, we've got a nice mix of staff. Really. We've yeah. obviously got a lot of part-time coaches and full-time coaches as well. 
Uh, I think we've got about 4,000 games between the coaching staff. So people like Neil Thompson, who, who had played yes. 700 games, Ipswich Barnsley yeah. in the Premier League, Nicky Weaver, Danny Kadri, Academy Matri, myself, Miguel Lera works with the younger boys as well. So we've got a real sort of good mix and, and bags of experience and, and people who are willing to pass their experience and knowledge on to the young ones. Yeah, David Hurst as well. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah which will bring us on in a minute, minute to one of the young players that I was referring to. The goalkeepers there, I mean, among the defenders, names that you see uh, in the first team squad group, uh, Connor O'Grady, Jordan Thornelly. Yeah, well, those two boys are in our under-23 group who are currently top of the league in the under-23s, nine points clear. So. Those two are 19 and 20, so again, the next stage of their career will be making a first team breakthrough somewhere or, or maybe having a loan move away from the club to experience men's football. But those two have been real solid citizens this year for that under 23 group that have, have really performed well. How many overall do you think you've got who are really close to it? I mean, there's a, there's a couple uh, in Jack Stobbs and James Murphy who I think have sampled a little bit. That's right, Jack Stobbs, uh, I think, has made two or three appearances, yeah. one a couple of years ago. and then. I think Carlos included him in it again back in the last season. So James Murphy made his debut away at Cambridge in the League Cup this season. Um, a lot of those boys are sort of knocking on the door, really. They've got to keep performing well under the 23s and, and, and grab opportunities when they arise and, and really take the eye of the first team staff, whether that's in a training environment or, or out on loan or in the under 23 games programme. Do you think if they were with a, a championship club that wasn't doing so well, that didn't have as much money, that was maybe in the, the lower half, do you think that some of those would actually be first team players now, even at, at championship level? Possibly. Um, you know, until you put them in, you can never be quite sure whether they're up to that level. Um, but no doubt there's some talent in the academy now. You know, the under 18s have performed well this year, won a lot of games, under 23s, like I've just said, and nine points clear. So. There's some real talent now at the upper end of the academy. Well, the under 23s, you say, way out in front at the top, had a great win, I think, at the start of this week at Hull by three goals to two. Uh, guess who got all, all three goals? Yeah, we're coming on to him now, uh, George Hurst. So let's ask you about him. I mean, he's having to be patient, but he, I, I, of all the other players I've mentioned there, um, they're all actually. Oh, Frank Betcher is another striker, the Frenchman that I, I was going to mention. Now he's 20, all the others are 19 or 20. George is still only 18. That's right, he just turned 18 a couple of weeks ago. So he's, yeah. he's an under 18 player for us, but obviously steps and plays under 23s quite a lot. A little bit of game time again with the first team and, and some training opportunities. And he's work in progress, obviously. He's got, we've seen him play, he's got attributes that will give defenders nightmares. And he's a hungry boy, so he's. He's got potential. Is he patient? Is he prepared to be patient? How you don't want patience in ad infinitum, do you? From a young player, impatience is is has got to be a good thing. Yeah, the challenge for every young go. player is yeah. if you're under 15, get offered a scholarship. That's a big milestone. Yeah. And then your next challenge is to get selected for under 18 team. Your next challenge is to get an under 23. The ultimate goal is to become a first team footballer for Sheffield Wednesday. So I'm, I'm sure that's that's what is in George's uh, future ambitions. He's achieved a couple of first team appearances already, uh, substitute league and league cup and, and league. Um, since then, uh, a certain Jordan Rhodes has arrived at the club uh, and so too Sam Winnell. And you know, there's, a, there's an embarrassment of riches at the front end of the first team. Now, that's making George's task and your task in pushing him Harder, isn't it? It is, but we've got to remember that he's only just turned 18. Um, yeah. Got a lot of senior strikers in front of him who've got proven pedigrees at this level, and like I said the club are mega ambitious and, and they're looking to push forward. So if the level rises, the challenge for us and as coaches and the young players, the, the challenge gets greater. So they've got to be better. Mm. Young George Canby, uh, you know, from from the attribute, what do you say are his main attributes? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you've been in his if you've seen him, you probably know what his attributes are. He's six I've foot seen, three. I've seen him on film quite a bit. He's got yeah. good movement. He's yeah. quick, um, an aerial threat. So he's taking a lot of boxes there as a centre forward, and obviously he's got a decent, goal, a pretty good goal record this year. Yeah. Scored the attribute the other night. All different goals as well. So, like I say, he's one of a number of young players in our system who, who we've got hopes for. But how far they go will, will be interesting to see in this this next few years. Scored goals internationally as well. He's got a couple for England under 17s and I think four in five appearances for the uh, for the under 18s. 
Uh, That's right. I've got a close relationship with under 18 manager for England, right. and, and he, he speaks well of George and selects him for international games. But again, we've got other internationals at the club now. We've got yeah. two Bulgarians in the 18s, one Lithuanian international, um, one lad who's just been picked for Scotland in the 19s, Fraser Preston. So we feel as if we're making real progress in the academy. Yeah, and George is obviously one that you'll have read that interests supposedly from Everton. Um, knowing the emanation of that story as a journalist, not involving you in this, I believe that to be true. We have absolutely no doubt that there's been interest there. I think Arsenal were even mentioned as well. Um, but I know that Wednesday are very keen to keep him. I, I, I saw an article in the Sheffield Star not long ago where you were talking about new contract talk. Yeah, I'm in charge of football things. The, the contract situation is dealt by other people, so yeah. I look after the football. Like I said, I work from the 23s down to under 9, so got a lot of players to look after and that's my job. Yeah, but hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll come to a conclusion and uh, yeah. yeah, but you're not involved in that no. particular, no. in the negotiations no. there. No. Um, of those players then, um, how, how many, say, if you can look ahead a year or two, would you hope to, to have as semi-regulars in, in, the, in the first team around that? Because I mean, it could be a Premier League first team. Yeah, like, hard, like, like I've said already, it's very difficult to put a number on how many, when they're going to break through. Yeah. Like I said, we've got talented boys at 20, 19, 18, 17, all the way through. So the big thing is when, when an opportunity arrives, they need to take it. Now, that mm. opportunity might be actually playing for the first team, which would be brilliant. Mm. It might be catching the first team and, and Carlos's eye in training, and, and, and that promotes them up a level. It might be going out on loan. We've got two boys out on loan at the moment in Sean Clare. And Matt Penny are out at League Two and yeah. League One, um, so their their pathway might be different to boys who are currently in the system. So I'm reluctant to put a to put a number on it. Really. No, I understand that. I mean, it's very difficult. You don't know which division you're in. Hopefully, you'll be in the Premier League. Do you watch the first team much? I do. Yeah, go to, to go to most games. Obviously, commitments at the weekends. We under yeah. 18 games on Saturday, so we have away games as well. So I can't always see the first team, but when I can, I make sure I go and and support them. Yeah, and of course. The social changes since you were in that academy uh, at Middlewood Road there, the cultural changes, for instance, these, uh, and the headphones and whatever, M3P players, what are they? What are they? What are they called? MC3P? <laughs> anyway, all of that. And I'm, I'm sure there's people out there laughing their socks off because I don't know what they are. Um, but these kids do. Uh, is that more of a battle for you, for you as an academy coach? People say there aren't the leaders, but people aren't talking as much as they should. It's a battle to some degree, but you've got to embrace the fact that society's changed and modern culture's changed, yeah. and, and you've got to adapt and evolve. Um, you do find that players are constantly looking at the phones and, and probably not interacting with each other and, and the staff as much as what they used to do, but times are different. so. You know, the under-18 group, we, we take the phones off them when they arrive in the morning um, to en encourage them to, to speak and have that communication aspect, which is vital when, when they go on the pitch. Brilliant. Um, How do they react at first when they come into the club? It was probably a little bit of a, a shock to start when we implemented it, but they, un they understand it now. The phone's always on if, if parents need to contact them in uh, an emergency. Yeah. Um, but we find that... It, Focus them on the football and, and interact with the teammates rather than and playing some stupid game on, on their iPhone or whatever. Yeah, and because of that communication, you want that communication to transfer from off the field onto the field as well, don't you? Yeah, it's vital. People, and people uh, say there aren't enough leaders in the senior game, yeah, let alone the definitely has game. And, and I think looking back 15, 20 years and, and comparing it with now, it has changed and mm. people don't talk as much now. It's you know even yeah. even people of, of my generation and other generations yeah. it, it's texting it's twitter it's social media my wife would tell you the same yeah, yeah. She'd, she'd, she'd agree with you so you've got to find different strategies to yeah. encourage people to to talk and, and like i said with the under 18 group one of those is we take the mobile phone away from them um when they arrive at the club in the morning excellent and if you find that somebody's managed to keep theirs and uh, what, what happens then yeah, we, we deal with that, but they respect, <laughs> they respect the rules. But again, they do get the phone at, at lunchtime and stuff. So if if they need to contact people in terms of okay. family logistics, but we encourage that when when we're at work, we're at work, Good and we work. focus on that. Brilliant. Look, we will spread this out. James Gregg will come in. He, he's got some things to say about another team that plays in Sheffield, among many other sports and many other teams. And also, you know Chris Wilder well. You used to play for Chris Wilder. We'll spread it out towards Blaze. Five minutes. We join us with Stephen Haslam. See you then.